Well, we can talk uh, more on this uh, with uh, John McTiernan, who's on the line uh, to us uh, from London. John is a political strategist who's worked, I think, both for the former Labour Prime Minister, Tony Blair, and as well with the Scottish Labour Party. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. Uh, perhaps you could tell us first why Nicola Sturgeon has chosen to resign now. Um, well, it surprised everybody. That's the first thing to say. And she made a gracious and eloquent speech uh, in resignation. I think we have to take her, her on her own word, which is she realised she didn't have um, the energy to carry on to the next election, to fight that election uh, as a referendum uh, on independence and then carry on after that. So it's a bit like Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand. She realised how exhausting the job was, how particularly exhausting the job has been um, in um, during COVID and post-COVID. And, you know, she's been 16 years in frontline politics as uh, Deputy First Minister and then First Minister of Scotland. Uh, that's longer than most people are in frontline politics. Normally, eight to 10 years uh, is the maximum people can survive on the, in the modern, fast-paced news environment. Internationally, she is she is really known as the face of uh, the Scottish mm. independence cause. Mm. Uh, what difference will her departure make to the issue of Scottish independence? Look, there's no doubt that she is a global figure of significance, a global figure in progressive politics, not my politics, but I recognise the attraction uh, and the and, and the power of the way that she speaks uh, and for her cause. She was a giant, before her, Alex Sam was a giant. And I think the thing is, after them come pygmies. There's nobody of her stature to succeed to her. Uh, there's talk of maybe four or five, maybe six um, SNP figures running. None of them are household names, uh, not even in their own households. So I think this is a major moment for the independence uh, cause in Scotland. Uh, and it may be that we've seen independence peak uh, in Scotland, the, the demand for it. It got me around for a very long time. In Scottish politics, but it may well have been that the chance was the last referendum which they did lose. And we were hearing just in that report that we ran just before you that Nicola Sturgeon had said the next uh, general election in the UK, which has to be aisled in 2024 at the latest, should be seen in Scotland as a de facto mm. referendum on Scottish independence. Now that she's gone, uh, what do you think the new leader might do? Will that policy well, change? It was very much a Nicola Sturgeon policy, and it was, again, in recent months, it was looking as though it was a, uh, that was a, a rash uh, thing to say, because with the Labour Party across the UK so f far ahead in the polls from the Tory party, um, it was extremely unlikely that the SNP could get at all close even to the 50% that you need to surpass to make a, a successful, you know, de facto referendum. So I think it was a rash promise by her at the time. It was looking more and more dangerous. Uh, there is a, this is, there's a special SNP conference uh, to look into this. They're going to discuss it. I think it's an issue that divides her party. And I think the problem that she's leaving for her next, uh, the next leader of the SNP is division on the GRA, the, the, the Act of Gender Recognition Act, uh, division on the strategies about independence. She managed to unite because she's a powerful figure with a big mandate and a, and a very you know, a globally significant figure. I think the smaller figures that come after her will find it much harder unite the party and uh, that's why one, one sees a more level uh, playing field for all the political parties in Scotland to fight on, not the issue, you know, everything dominated by either Alex Salmond, the big figure, the previous leader of the SNP, or, or Nicola Sturgeon. So it's a huge moment in Scottish politics. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, as you say, aside from that issue of independence, what is her legacy in Scotland? How is she seen in Scotland? What has she done? And, you know, how damaged has she been by all these recent uh, rows? So the, the thing to say is she has made no achievements of substance uh, in Scotland. Because of the focus uh, on achieving independence, any form of public sector reform, any form of innovative policy strategies were put to one side because the SNP always feared annoying parts of the country who they'd want to get behind independence. So it was a very, you know, there's a lot of talk about being progressive but not a single uh, piece of legislation or single action by the by the SNP which redistributed wealth in Scotland despite the powers of a tax on welfare. So uh, what would she leave? Maybe um, uh, free free hostel car parks for hostel staff. 
it's a very, very low level of lasting achievement. In terms of you know, the, the Gender Reform Act, the, the new rights, the trans rights she was bringing through, that was an attempt to, to, to leave a legacy which is hers. She's very passionate about it. It's a reform which I personally believe in. I think it's the right thing to do. It's the first time the SNP leadership have gone ahead of the public. The public are, are deeply opposed to the reform, uh, as they quite often are to socially, uh, you know, socially progressive reforms. Not taking the public with her is the biggest sin that an SNP leader can, can, can cause, because it's the greatest one you can commit, because you need the public to vote for your main thing, which is independence. And because of this focus on independence, uh, I think she's damaged the independence cause, certainly in the eyes of the SNP by the Gender Reform Act. And that's why she left, she'll have left no lasting legacy. First woman, first minister, that will always be hers. Longest serving first minister, that will probably be hers for quite a while. But actually, when you look back on it, what a wasted opportunity to build a better Scotland. I think that will be the reflection of history on her. Big figure, uh, but no real lasting achievements. OK, well, thank you very much uh, for your analysis. John McTurnan there, political strategist. Uh, you, of course, have worked uh, for Tony Blair as his political operations director and as well for the Scottish Labour Party afterwards. That is it from us for now. There'll be no more news on the half hour and, of course, at five o'clock. Take care.